Well, good morning, friends. Oh, Mr. Wayne is turning around here. He's waving. <laughs> We're getting ready to mow grass, and I'm going to finish planting. I've had a rough weekend, and I probably look a little rough. I cracked uh, my molar in the back, one of my upper molars in the back, and oh my God, is that ever painful. So, of course, you can't get to the dentist right away, and I can't wear my flipper tooth, so I got a big gaping hole. Looks like somebody pulled a two-by-four out of my mouth where that tooth is missing. But we have to contend with that right now because I can't wear my flipper with that cracked molar. Please forgive me. Um, I still did a lot of planting, and Mr. Wayne and I did a whole lot of stuff this weekend. And we had a little bit of help with Miss Stella. Oh, we got it. Um, probably not as fast as I normally could have got things planted, but I was in a little bit of pain, friends. So bear with me. I'm going to show you what all I've got done so far, what we've got done so far. And then we can uh, finish planting this bed. Let's see, not this one, the one next to me. That bed on the far side. We'll finish planting that. I'm going to put peppers. Oh, I don't know exactly. I think I'm going to put more cucumbers in that one. And I'm going to put peppers in with my squash. Because peppers and squash grow together nicely. I can even put a few. I got a few beefsteak tomatoes that I still want to plant. All right. This bed right here, you can see my little cabbage plants. I've got eight on each side. Eight green. No. One, two, three, four. Yeah, eight green and eight um, red cabbage. And then down the middle, because cabbage and dill make very good companions in the garden, I'm going to put dill and uh, marigolds down the middle of this bed because those cabbages will sprawl out. And right here, which is another good companion for cabbage, on that trellis I'm going to do my, um, on this side it's going to be my birdhouse gourds, because they'll sprawl all around. And on this side, I'm gonna do a few pole beans because those two can grow together nicely. And I've got tomatoes in here. This is really nice. This whole row right here, going right through here, is all marigolds. And there's eggplants down there. At the very end, I got about four plants. I have got... I think 14 tomato plants, they're all indeterminates. They're all different, but they're all indeterminates. So we put this big, our big fence up there for it. And they'll grow nicely on there. I can attach them to that fence, grow them, you know, nice. Because indeterminates, they'll sprawl out quite a bit. This bed over here is doing good. I've got my beets over there that are doing really good my beans we just planted you know the few days back before the weekend so those aren't sprouting yet but they will be and it's looking good and then i got a trellis i got two trellises one on the far side let's see i got a trellis on the far side this is the fence for the tomatoes and this is another trellis and that again is going to be um uh, probably pole beans i don't know i don't think tomatoes and um yeah i know tomatoes and gourds don't get along in your garden so it's going to be um pole beans on this side And the greenhouse. Oh my God, it's bursting. I'm telling you, I got to get some of the stuff out. We've got to move what's left in here out, which is a lot because I did grow a lot because there are families that I give um, plants to, to, you know, to grow their own garden. And we sell quite a few of them. So I still got flowers left to sell and stuff. So there, there's a lot of stuff here. And uh, it'll all be sold or donated. And then here, and look at, 
our place is a mess because we're still in the midst of uh, planting. So I got all my stuff there. I still got plants there. I planted this with my um, oregano. This is my rosemary, my oregano, and I've got nasturtiums and sweet basil in there. Large leaf sweet basil. And my parsley's still doing good. And you can see the kids have found <laughs> the dirt mound again. So Stella's still here and she's been playing in that. But we are definitely going to spread this once we're all done planting. We're going to spread that mound all over this area where the garden used to be. And then we're going to reseed that. We're going to seed, uh, put grass seed all through here and that over there, Mr. Wayna, we used all that dirt and what was left, he mixed it in with my compost and it's over there behind that barrel in a nice little pile and it's going to brew all summer and all winter for next year. Um, we are going to seed all this area where it's all bare. We're going to lay down some grass seed, especially once those beds are completely done. I still need a, a couple more plantings to do. And that way we can, you know, head over there and uh, water from the other side so that it doesn't, you know, hurt the grass seed. And we can still get to it. The market stand is doing okay. It's not as loaded as it would have been for the memorial weekend but again i was just dying this weekend with my tooth oh my goodness i finally got ambisol anybody has a cracked tooth i'm telling you that ambisol 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 works wonderful it numbs it oh <laughs> you bite you put your teeth i couldn't even hardly talk to put my teeth together it's terrible anyway i'm going to show you I got my, Stella and I planted the um, impatience around the tree. We planted this whole garden. I still got a few to put in there, but it's got zinnias and four o'clocks and cosmo and marigolds all in there and nasturtiums along the front. And I send out some of my mint. I like that mint going, but that mint would have taken over the, this entire area if I let it. But look, we got the um, we got the uh, impatience all planted, and that's that's a little memorial flower bed for my mother. She loved to see impatience growing around trees, so that's what we did. And you can see my peas, and my potatoes are doing fabulous. The other day I planted that full of sunflowers, so they're quite close together, but they do well. I've planted them close together many times. And I still got my mess out here. My carrots, you can see them now in the box. They're green. All are wood, friends. <laughs> we are going to build in this section right here where all the cement pads. That at one point in time was a garage. I mean, years ago, probably in the 50s, you know. So, Mr. Wayne, now we're going to build... A uh, not a garage, but a great big huge shed and uh, like work um, workshop. So and it's a sixteen by twenty, so it'll be a nice size for that for storing all our tools in and our equipment. And you know, if we need to do a project if it's raining, we got it covered. And then that's going to be a lot of that wood right there that we were gonna use for the siding. It's, we can't use it for the siding because it's, it was cut wrong, it's too thick, and we can't get it, we can't find anybody that can mill it down for us to the, you know, price. for a reasonable price. <laughs> yeah, they want a lot of money, almost as much as we paid for the wood to mill it down to um, the size we need. It's, it's between one and a half to two inches right now, each of those boards, and we needed them at three quarters of an inch. So, well, you know, we're going to build the workshop with it. And we're also going to build, um, a little 10 by 10 wooden structure for the market stand. So that way we can keep the refrigerator and everything out there for the winter. And my other potatoes are doing really good in my bed over there. We'll go have a look.
Those are doing real good over there. And I just put two rows in there, so give them lots of room to grow. That's all set up in my grill. We're uh, ready to start cooking outside, but we're not going to start cooking out there until we get this planting done. So anyway, and we've got babies. I'll show you the baby bunnies. Oh, look at her, friends. There's Mama. Now, here's all her babies. We got seven of them. They're so pretty. See them in there? Look at them sleeping upside down. The grandkids come get them. I'll show you. They're so darling. Let me get one. Oh, the little baby. Look at them. His eyes aren't quite open yet. But they're so beautiful. See them. Aw. They want to put them down there where they're nice and warm and cover them all back up. It's okay, Mama. I won't hurt them. Yeah. All right, we'll close this down and leave her alone with the babies. We've got seven of them. <laughs> what do you do with seven rabbits? Well, our Amish friends are going to take all the bunnies, plus they're going to take the buck. So no more babies. We just want a couple of bunnies. And that's all we want. And we'll have the two females left and the male and all the babies will go to our Amish friends. Problem solved. Okay, friends. I'm hoping you can hear me because I got my microphone going. Um, I've got my peppers. And I need to get plants. Okay? And you can plant all your peppers together. But I've, I've also got hot peppers and, you know, sweet bell peppers. So I will spread them out. I will put the hot peppers as far away from the sweets as I can. So it'll go according to um, heat. And I need my gloves and I need my um, little... No. I've got bone meal and blood meal and between bone meal i use organic bone meal and organic blood meal between those two and i always um use triple 12 on my grass so my gardens always get triple 12 in them and it doesn't hurt a bit they grow beautifully so but this is all i really use is blood meal and bone meal when i plant all my all my um vegetables not so much with my flowers, but with my veggies. When I dig the hole, you see, I put one, one little handful of blood meal and a handful of bone meal in there, plant it, give it some water, and it's good to go. I'm gonna go get my uh, bare bones knife. So I'm gonna dig my hole. Thank you, honey. This is nice and wet. Do these about a little more than a foot apart. Nothing fancy. You don't need anything fancy to grow vegetables. Absolutely not. You don't need to spend a whole lot of money. Just plant them. Feed them. And they'll grow beautiful for you. And we're getting it. We're going to do a handful of blood meal in each hole. About three tablespoons.
And this will feed them beautifully. I'll show you what it is as soon as I get up there. Organic blood meal. I probably got just enough bone meal for this. And the bone meal, the blood meal is packed with nitrogen, of course, obviously. The bone meal is a good source of calcium. And it also is good for tomatoes. If you plant bone meal, a handful of bone meal in your uh, tomato hole before you plant your tomato, it will help prevent blossom and rot. Oh, I need to show you that. And there's your organic bone meal. Okay, so. I lay one in each hole. Yesterday when I was planting, oh my goodness, this weekend when I was planting with my, oh, my tooth was hurting so bad I'd bend over and my head would just throb. I, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. That's horrible. Okay, now we're gonna leave that little thing right here so we know what those are. Four more, and I know I got four more in here. And then I got sweet banana peppers. And I'll plant those probably out front. I think I missed a hole for the bone meal. I gotta put a little bone meal in there. I don't know how I missed it, <laughs> but it did. All right, good. Okay, now all I do, cover them up, push down. Mm. Beautiful. That's how easy it is to plant. These are going to be lovely. I got some high spots in my raised bed, but that's all right. Works out nice. See, so there was nothing fancy in there. I paid $20 for my uh, blood meal or bone meal. And I think $10, is it? Yeah, no, $12 for my blood meal. And that's it. That's cheap. You know, you can pay hundreds of dollars to try and grow vegetables. And, or you can just do, you know, blood meal and bone meal and grow beautiful vegetables. I do every year. I don't buy, I don't use drip irrigation. I don't, you know, my, my, all my vegetables get watered from above and, uh, I don't do drip irrigation because they say tomatoes don't like their their leaves wet and it promotes disease and you know I buy disease resistant tomatoes yes I do but I don't do anything special I just put my vegetables in the dirt feed them good and grow them and I get a uh, plenty so don't let anybody tell you you need to have everything fancy because you don't I've done this for years, and, and it works beautiful. Look at those, look nice. Okay, now. I like to do this now, instead of trying to fight with the plant later, okay? 
And these are so old. They've been used so many years. I am going to put these right down here because these will help keep oh my goodness my plants upright and protected. I don't use them for tomatoes because they're too flimsy. Tomatoes get too big. But my peppers, they do good with them. So that's what I use them for. I just put them right down in there. Oh, I hit something. I hit a rock. I know, something's down under there. Can you pull that apart? Mr. Wayna. And that blood meal and that bone meal will feed the blood meal will feed your plants up to four months. Blood meal, you know, you'll have to give them a little more. Well, I'll have to this one's all jacked up, but we can still use it. Watch this. We'll still get it in there. Beautiful. And that, oops. Go. And not only that, these will get a little bigger and provide a little bit of shade for the uh, squash. And it will, the leaves will shade out the dirt, so it helps with weed control. I only need four more. Oh, okay. Oh, you're so smart. Okay. Now oh, let's see here. I keep hitting that. We got a log down in there. There we go. Well, it's not gonna. Maybe that time. Good enough. There we go. Last one. All right, friends, we got this. Okay. Okay, take a look. Looks good. They're all gonna be protected now. I'll get them watered after I get the other ones planted and those are all sweet bell peppers. And you all know I love them because I freeze dry them. So, those look good. And that's how easy they are to plant. And if they do get heavy and start, you know, falling over in those tomato cages, I just put a, a little spike down in there and hold it up. But I've never had that problem with these and peppers. Now, I have had that problem with tomatoes. So, I don't use those for tomato, uh, the tomato cages for tomatoes anymore. Okay, friends, it's totally another day, and the other day I showed you, it was yesterday, <laughs> I planted tomatoes and peppers, and I planted all kinds of stuff, and then I couldn't take the pain anymore. My tooth, you all know, has been just killing me. Well, I have got a hot date with my dentist tomorrow to get that molar extracted. So, goodbye toothache. <laughs> 
Anyway, and then hopefully I can wear my flipper tooth and everything be back to normal for a little while anyway, because I am going to have more extensive um, dental work done. But anyway, this day, you know what I did. I baked 16 loaves of bread for my market stand. And I did white bread. I did whole wheat bread. I did my cinnamon pull apart bread and I added a new pull apart bread. I did a garlic and herb pull apart bread. And I'll show this to you. It's absolutely stunning. And it's wonderful tasting. So I didn't show you how to do that because that was just like a, um, I just developed that recipe, you know, and I'm going to do a video on it after, you know, a couple days after I get my tooth pulled and my mouth calms down and, you know, my headache is gone, <laughs> you know, and we'll do this video. We will do, um, the garlic herb pull apart bread. And I know that's going to be a good seller. I've already had people ask me if I could do garlic bread. So I'm going to give them a beautiful garlic herb pull apart bread. So anyway, that is it for this video, friends. I am going to take a few days off after I have my tooth pulled. I'm just going to relax. The, the garden is almost done. I just put the last boxes out to the side of the house here on hold. We're going to be souping those up with another layer. And then when, you know, after a couple days, I'll take you out there when I'm ready to plant and we'll plant them together. I promise you. And then pretty soon we will be able to do our very first garden tour and you're going to love it. Friends, we've done a lot of work. Um, I've got, we will be doing a chit chat probably before we do the planting because there's a few things I want to tell you that we've gone and done for ourselves. So anyway, with this friends, I'm going to go. You guys have a wonderful night. I'll see you in about four days and we'll, we'll make the, um, garlic pull apart bread. We'll have a chit chat and we'll finish getting the garden planted so that we can move on to our garden tour. You will have a good night and thanks for watching.